Hey, what's going on everybody and welcome back to another Fallout 4 mod bundle, the show where we take a bunch of mods surrounding one similar theme and group them all together into a nice little list for you guys. And as you can tell from the title, we're tackling one of my favorite topics yet again, and that is realism and immersion mods. And today I'm going to really, really try to focus on some stuff to help make the wasteland a little bit more realistic in your Fallout 4 load order. I know some people think it's a bit silly to try to make a game like Fallout realistic since it's very much not realistic at its core, but since it is such an amazing survival sandbox, it is fun to try to add some more difficulty to your game, but also some more realism that just make it a bit more immersive to play. Now, usually when we talk about immersion mods, there's often an emphasis on difficulty in survival mode, but that is not the case today. I actually have a handful of mods that are going to, one, make your game more realistic, but two, actually make it a bit easier in a realistic way. So that's pretty cool. Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in with our first mod, which is going to be Splinters Breakable Wooden Doors by Ulithium Dragon. Now, this is a pretty old and pretty popular mod, but just in case you haven't heard of it, Splinters is going to add the functionality to have breakable doors in Fallout 4. Now, this isn't going to add any insane levels of destruction or super realistic door destruction, but it is going to add the ability to break down doors with your weapons, which is still really, really cool. If you're in the middle of a combat scenario and you don't want to have to worry about opening doors or doing a lockpick, you can just shoot the door down. And it's going to take a good amount of bullets, but it is still a really cool feature. If there's an enemy behind a door that you know has something very dangerous and you don't want to walk up to it and open it, you can now shoot the door down from a distance. Or say there's something behind a lockpick door and you really, really need to get to it, but you can't take the time to use the lockpick, especially if you're using something like Fall Souls, which doesn't allow you to pause the game during lockpick. Now you can shoot that locked door down, which is pretty realistic. If a door is locked and you can't get through it, just shoot it down. Honestly, this just adds a lot of fun to the game. Not only does it help you come up with cool, unique combat scenarios, but also it's just fun to shoot down doors, to be honest. Additionally, there are a couple of things that I noticed while testing. A, you can actually shoot down doors at your workshop, which is really, really cool. However, it only applies to vanilla workshop doors. So the door on the left and right in the footage totally broke down because those are both vanilla doors, but the one in the middle was one that was added via a mod, and so it does not have the correct keywords and was not able to be shot down. So just keep that in mind. If you use any vanilla doors in your settlements, you do have the potential to shoot them down. Additionally, you cannot shoot down doors that lead to cells, which is a good thing because you wouldn't want to permanently break something like that. So if a door is required to get into or out of a new cell or building, then you are not able to shoot it down, which is really, really nice as a failsafe. But yeah, there's not much more to it than that. Splinters allows you to shoot down doors. It's pretty cool and pretty realistic. And I have to say, it just it's just a lot of fun. It really is. Up next, we actually have a brand new mod that happened to come out right before I started filming this video, and that is called Have a Seat by LZ. This is going to add a reason to actually sit down in the game, and that doesn't seem like a big deal, but it's actually really, really nice. In the vanilla game, you are able to sit in Fallout 4, and it doesn't have a huge purpose other than the ability to pass time, since you can't wait at any time you want like you could in, say, Fallout New Vegas. But now there's even more reason to sit down in Fallout 4, so you can join all the NPCs, have a seat, have a snack, and you'll actually get benefits from this. First of all, sitting in this game will now have a well-rested perk. Whenever you sit down, your character will feel rested and they'll get a number of bonuses, including increased AP regeneration, an improvement to their carry weight for a limited amount of time, and a couple of other pretty neat bonuses. Additionally, anytime you eat food while sitting, it will be doubled compared to if you were to eat that food while standing. So if you just got done with an encounter, let's say you cleared out an entire room full of gunners, Take a seat on a nearby bench or chair, have a snack, and you'll get not only the well-rested perk, but you'll get improved healing from that food, which is a really nice bonus and, again, gives you a reason to actually sit down. No longer will all of the set dressing just be completely pointless. All of those chairs now actually have a purpose, which is really, really cool. Additionally, every setting in this mod is totally customizable over at the MCM. So if you open up your mod configuration menu, you can tweak these to your liking. It can be how long you want to wait until that well-rested perk kicks in, slash what actually is applied with the well-rested perk, whether or not you get the double healing bonus from food. Everything is customizable right here, which is really, really nice. So you can play this mod exactly how you want. I gotta say, I really, really like this one. It's a very small amount of utility, but knowing that it's there for some improved bonuses in survival mode is really nice. 
Now, up next, we actually have a settlement mod, but just hear me out here. This one actually provides a good amount of realism, at least in my head, when it comes to how you build settlements. And this is known as Graph Security Fences by Graph Panzer. Now, this is going to add a handful of chain link fences into the game, but each of them are a bit different than the standard vanilla security fences that you might find. There are some regular old chain link fences, but there are also some that have some built in fortifications like cinder blocks, as well as metal walls and a couple of things like that. There's even a handful of door options and even auto closing doors for those of you who like that functionality at your settlement. Now, the reason that I really like this mod and the reason that it's here on the realism slash immersion list is this is totally believable. When you look at some people's settlements in Fallout 4, you gotta wonder how a handful of settlers can build some of these crazy bases and walls, but this one feels totally believable. You can absolutely just pick up some chain link fence nearby, put it down at your settlement, and then reinforce it with some cinder blocks, sandbags, or even just some scrap metal. And that's exactly what's provided in this mod. I've been looking for a fence mod like this forever. I used to make all of these fences by hand using three or four different settlement items, but now, they're just here ready to be placed and they all have really good snapping points or you can use stuff like place anywhere to get them even more customizable. Now, don't get me wrong. I think some other mods that add fences are totally believable. Like the idea that settlers would want to use a tipped over car as a fence makes perfect sense. It's bulletproof, it's heavy, and people aren't going to be able to knock it over. But the question that I always have is how did they get it there in the first place? Without use of something like a robot or power armor, it's going to be pretty hard for people to lift that car into place. Whereas these chain link fences from Graph Security Fences make perfect sense. And then you throw up a piece of sheet metal behind it to add a little bit more privacy and a teensy bit of cover. And I think it's pretty nice. Then combine that with some other settlement mods to throw on sandbags and other fortifications. And I think this makes a perfect new fence for your settlements. I think it's really believable. It's not something that's super important to everybody, but if you do like to have your settlements be a little bit more realistic, I think this is a really cool mod to add new fences to your settlement. Moving away from settlement mods though, let's talk about some more of these realistic gameplay mods. First, I'm gonna show you a clip of something that is in the vanilla game, which is just wrong. That's right, fire actually persists in water. And if you get caught on fire by say a flamer or molotov and you jump into water in the vanilla game, it will not go out until the fire has run its course. But there is a mod known as Water Puts Out Fire by TrainWiz, which is going to aim to fix this. Now, whenever you have this mod activated, if you are set on fire by a flamer, molotov, or whatever source, and you jump in water, the fire will immediately cease, which is super cool and super realistic. If you're on fire, what is going to be your first instinct? Jump in water. And there's actually some AAA titles out there that do make use of this system, but Fallout 4 was not one of them. But now, thanks to this mod, a very simple mod, it totally works. If you get set on fire, simply jump in the nearest body of water if there is one near you, and the fire is going to be put out. But keep in mind that the fire effects in Fallout 4 aren't super long to begin with, so this is very situational. This isn't going to be your end-all be-all answer to flame damage, but if you happen to get set on fire near water, this is a really nice mod to have installed. Now, really quick, I do want to give a small tutorial on how to actually activate this mod because it doesn't just work out of the box. So whenever you download this mod, you're going to need to open up the console and you're going to type in player.addspell and then the code for the spell. Now, the spell is going to have a unique code to everybody because it depends on the order in which it falls in your load order. Now, if you use Fallout 4 edit or X edit, you can easily look up the code right there and you won't even have to worry about it. Once done, you have the spell and it totally works. Now you can jump in water to extinguish fires automatically. Super cool mod. It's a really minor one, but it just does add that little bit of realism that will help to make your game just a little bit more immersive. Now, finally, for our last mod, this is not only going to show you a brand new immersive realism mod, it's also going to answer a question that a lot of people have been asking in my comment section. I often get asked what damage modifiers I use, and the answer is I don't actually use any all-in-one damage modifier mods, but rather a combination of mods. One is the survival configuration menu, which we've talked about a lot, but I also use that in conjunction with realistic headshots by Shadow Shade, which is what I'm going to be showing off right now. With Survival Configuration Menu, I can tweak the damage to my liking, but it doesn't fix one issue I have with the vanilla game, and that is how unrealistic headshots are. Fallout 4 is absolutely riddled with bullet sponges, and if you shoot an unarmored raider in the head in the late game, there's a high chance that they're not going to die. In fact, if you check out the footage on screen now, you'll see that this raider takes an entire magazine from a pistol 
and doesn't die. And that's just insane. So that's why Realistic Headshots is my go-to mod. This is going to add a flat multiplier to all damage when it comes to headshots, but only for select enemies. But essentially, for all humanoid enemies, if you shoot them in the head without any armor, they're going to die. But if they're a higher level enemy with some actual armor and they really do have to have that head armor, they may take one or two more shots. But it's never going to be 50 headshots again to take down an enemy. Now, really quick, let's specify what enemies are actually affected by this mod because it's a pretty realistic set of enemies. Any humans or any creatures aside from heavier creatures like Mirelurk, Queens, and Deathclaws will be affected by this mod. Obviously, things like robots are not going to be affected by this mod, except for Robo Brains, since they do actually have a brain. So, aiming for that weak point is going to be very beneficial, especially if you're going through that Automatron DLC. So, for the most part, in all of your encounters, aiming for the head is definitely going to be very rewarding when using this mod. This mod is an absolute must-have, and it has not left my load order ever since I found it. I couldn't stand how much the enemies were bullet sponges in the vanilla game, and this really helps to alleviate that problem, especially when you combine it with damage modifiers. So, yeah. That's going to wrap up this video when it comes to realism and immersion. I hope you guys found at least one mod in here that you want to add to your own load order. If you did, feel free to let me know which one you found down in the description below, or feel free to recommend even more realism mods down in the comments, because I'm sure that anybody watching this is looking for even more recommendations. With that, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to drop a rating. Consider subscribing if you haven't already for more videos just like this. Big shout out to all of my patrons for supporting every single video, and a special thank you to YouthRC, Helljumper2077, Jackie Noy, indecisive wolf feed and captain chaos for signing up for that tier 3 patreon membership you guys are awesome and super generous if you want to check out the patreon it will be linked down in the description below but of course it is completely optional thank you guys so much for your support on every single video and i hope to see you in the next one peace